Hi everyone, Sharon Brennan here, Cottage Lane Stamper, back with you again. Um, hopefully now my audio is better. I, th I think I've got a fix. I got a better microphone. So anyway, um, let me just see if I can find myself on my other phone. So if there's any comments, I can respond. Let's see. Turn the sound off of that one. There we go. Okay, we're all set. <laughs> it's good to be back with you guys again. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Um, I've got a, a card today that I saw on um, another website, Tailored Expressions. I uh, get my little calendars, my little mini calendars um, from there. And can you believe that I already sent in a registration today for... Um, my first craft fair for this fall and it's it'll be the only one probably that I'll participate in anyway but I couldn't believe I <laughs> got the registration form yesterday in the mail and uh, I'm registered or will be as soon as they they get it um so looking forward to that and with that I'll soon be mailing out an email to all my um customers um for the mini calendars too so um be looking forward to that so anyway and this month um for my classes i have an option if someone out there wants to check out um card making classes um i've got a, a an offer for them to come and either do it on the evening class on the 29th or the morning class on the 30th and they can come and make um, a free card. So just to check it out and see what it's like and see if they like it or not. So with that, we will get started with today's card. It may take a little bit longer um, because I'm doing a little fussy cutting and a little painting. So anyway, we're gonna put this down. And hopefully I've got it centered good. Let's see. I think that something is in the way here. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Hopefully. I think that's a little bit better. Um, A little bit of shadow. I'm not sure where that shadow is coming from. So, if I move my light a little bit. Hmm, I think it's actually coming from my phone. <laughs> so, let's see. Well, we'll just go with this. This is a card that um, we'll be making today and I'm using the um, the jar of flowers stamp set and the coordinating punch the jar punch so I'm going to be using these two things and we're going to be doing a little bit of watercoloring um, excuse me <coughs> so we're going to start out with and, oh, this stamp, I should mention, too, it's got, if you look at this, these three pieces here are reversible. So I will be doing stamping it with the detail on one side and the reverse mm -hmm. solid on the other side. So, and then this stripe is also, um, or hash mark or whatever you want to call it, is also um, reversible. So um, let's see what we can get going here. See if I can get some light on this subject. This is kind of driving me a little bit of crazy. Not sure what it is. So we are going to start out with a piece of watercolor paper. We're actually going to have two pieces. Um, this one is going to be for the background. Um, that's watercolored and then embossed. And it is, let's see, 
three and a half by five. And if you buy the watercolor paper, I should haul it out here. Um, if you buy the watercolor paper, you get, I think it's ten sheets. Yep, ten sheets. And they are five by seven. So basically what I did was I just cut one of these in half. So um, that makes it easier to measure. And then I have another piece that's kind of a scrap piece and that's going to be for the flowers. Um, and I think it measures, I won't use all of this, but it's like four by two. I think three by two would be sufficient for it. So first we're going to do the water coloring. Now if you haven't used the watercolor painters, we've got our aqua painters were replaced in the last catalog with the water um, water painters. So you get mm -hmm. a fine point, a broader point, and then a real broad point. So this is the one we're going to be make, using today. And I wanted to mention too that, um, I think that goes with that one, they snap on. And I like that they actually will snap onto the back, the bottom, so you don't lose your lid. But when you're opening these, they open opposite. So when you go to open it, you screw it clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise. It's what we're used to. And then we can fill the barrel. And then <laughs> it's hard to get used to <laughs> screwing it the other way to, <laughs> to reattach it. So I fought with that and I thought, what in the heck is going on? And I think I actually posted something on a Facebook group, a demonstrator site, and um, they said, oh, we have to turn it the other way. I was using pliers and everything else, and <laughs> this is good grief, Granny. This is bad news. So I've got my, I've got a balmy blue here, and now I have it all over my fingers. That didn't take long, did it? Let's see. Got my chamois here. Wipe my hands off. I use this a lot to, to wipe off my hands. <laughs> it's crazy. So if you have a reinker, let me get this out of the way so I don't mess it up. You can just put a drop in your tray. And then what I do is get ink underneath my thumb. <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> I do all these things when I'm live not when I'm just sitting here by myself. So, and not frequently anyway, I have a little water bottle that I, and I just like to add a couple drops of water to it. And then I'm just gonna, you can actually push water down the water barrel too and add water that way. And because it's so broad, it, um, it really just comes out fast. I've got some kind of dots on here, but that's okay because I was going to add some more. And I'm just going to give a light little wash. So there's a darker color down there, and I'm using the the one that's got that's more diluted for my wash, my back background wash. So then I'm going to take the um, balmy blue Stampin' Right marker, and I'm just going to take the tip, and I'm going to close this up first. And just take it and add some splotches to this. Give a little bit of dimension. A little bit more interest. And then I'm going to emboss this my barrel off with um I need my big boss here there and I'm using the brick and mortar embossing folder so and when you do your embossing, remember always to put 
your fold in first so the pressure from the plates goes this way if you put it in with the open end first you're going to put pressure on your on the fold here and eventually it's going to crack and you're not going to be happy so i'm going to make sure i have my bricks going the right way which is a good idea as straight as i can be and because this is a 3d folder i only need the number one plate and then the number four plate so tip that in there give it a crank I even have a note on here, you can't see it, but um, to remind my class people that the fold goes first when they're embossing. So I'm going to take this out, fold this up, get it out of the way. I love that it folds up so that you can make more room on your counters for it or for traveling too. It's a great thing. So. Here is our little background piece. I love I love this brick and mortar one. It's really cool too when you um you know uh, sponge it. Um, I just I, I have a couple other brick folders and this one is by far my favorite one. Then we're gonna take um our other piece of watercolor paper and I'm gonna bring in my stamp and pierce mat because these are photopolymer <clears throat> and when you um, are doing watercolor you want to use stays on ink because it, it won't bleed it's an alcohol based ink and I'm using this flower stamp so make sure one thing I love about photopolymer is that you can see if you've got enough ink on there and we're just gonna bring this in here and center it as much as I can give it a good press I like to let them sit for a minute or two not a minute it didn't give me as good coverage as I wanted so I'm just gonna try that again better yes that's much better now especially with your photopolymer you're going to want to clean this right away at your stamp so we have stays on cleaner in our catalog and i'll put it'll be on the list of of supplies hi cindy talk to linda at church on sunday <laughs> say hi to your mom and we're just going to tab some that stays on cleaner on there and I have um, my cleaning pad I forget what you call them and we're just going to dry it on the side the sides wet and the sides dry so I didn't put any cleaner on there because I use the stays on cleaner normally I would spray it with um, the, the stamp the rubber stamp cleaner so we're gonna we're gonna watercolor this now. I've got my other. I'll put them away. I'm gonna use the the finer tip one. And I didn't get it screwed on all the way. And I have a little bit of balmy blue. We're gonna go back to that. And we're just gonna take a little bit and color in all the. The little leaves here. I actually did this with uh, my alcohol markers and I honestly like the watercoloring best with this card. So you can get a little bit more variety of color I think. I'm not that good with coloring but um, I really you can get a little bit more depth I think with the watercolor 
So we're just going to color these flowers in. Balmy blue. And if I want a little bit darker, I can just go to the darker parts here. And I think I'm going to do those a little bit darker in the middle here. Kind of from the center. I'm actually not even watching where I'm dipping my pen. <laughs> So, and then we've got, I'm going to take some darker colors for these smaller ones. I can't remember when flowers are just coming out to bloom, if they are darker or lighter. I don't remember. <laughs> I've grown a lot of flowers in my time. So, I'm going to get that. I'm going to set, close this up, up, put it away, and then actually I have a little, I don't remember what you call these, like condiment cups. we we'll put some water in here, and I'm just going to kind of wash this off a little bit. And get a paper towel and dry it. Now I'm going to take some um, fresh freesia, and I haven't gotten the... Um, Reinkers for this, so this is what the reinkers look like. So you get quite a bit in these little bottles. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off the edge here with my pen, and I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit of purple to this flower. And to me, there's really no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of dabbing it around, but I think it. It really makes it look more realistic when there's a little bit more color. And I love purple and blue together. So, and I love this fresh freesia. So, let's see. There. And we're going to just clean this off a little bit. And I'm going to bring in some old olive. No, pear pizzazz, I think, first. And just a little bit of water in there. And I'm going to do these leaves in pear pizzazz. I love watercolors anyway. The artwork. So 